Hi, I'm Nick Barton from Markforce, and we're here at Rapids, and we've got a cool new announcement that we've been talking about today at the show, and so I've got Craig here to explain it for you. Hey there, uh, we have a big idea, and we have our first sort of technology uh, instantiation of that. The big idea is about adaptive manufacturing. It's about using, uh, uh, about closing the loop on manufacturing and using artificial intelligence to get you to the right part the first time and every time. I'll show you a demo of Blacksmith, which is our technology that's going to bring this to life. Here's a wrench that we printed with our metal 3D printer. Um, one of the most complicated parts of this it, to, to get right is the sintering process, which binds the metal powder together in the very last step. It can introduce geometric distortions, which make making the, the functional part of the wrench uh, exactly right. So what we do is we print it, and then we measure it. So I have here a ferro arm scanner. First thing I do is do a quick calibration routine. And then I can scan the surface of the part. I'll get all a little less detail in here. <laughs> And then when I'm completed with that, what it does is it takes the original input file, the CAD, your design intent, and it compares it to the part you actually created. And what it outputs is a heat map. Red is bad, yellow is not quite as bad, but still bad. And you, know, you really, so these are the areas where the geometric distortion of the print ended up being not as good as we wanted to be. So what Blacksmith does is it corrects them. It gives you a second chance to print the part. It, it learns from its first mistakes. And it says, do you want to print that again? So now we're going to scan the second part. So this is the... This is the second part. This is the part where our system will learn what the problems were that happened the first time, and it will compensate. It'll it'll adapt. Yeah, roll. Let's see how it did the second time. Yeah, roll. There we go. We're seeing a lot more green now, especially in my critical area, which is what I want to see. And I can verify that indeed now I have a wrench that works. So that's Blacksmith. It's trying using artificial intelligence to uh, uh, when you're doing it with just one part, uh, it's you know, just getting it's just doing better math. But when you're doing it across thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of parts, uh, it's using artificial intelligence to get to the right part the first time and every time. Great. Thanks, Greg. All right, so that's Blacksmith. Really exciting development on, on the Mark IV's gen. Now we're going to do a tour of the booth so you can see what sort of demo parts and what sort of printers we brought with us. So let's start over here. Where are we, uh, where are we going, Apparatus? So this is the first trade show ever where we've actually brought our entire metal system with us. So we have our Metal X printer, and we also have our Wash 1 and our Center 1 stations, which are, which are sold together in a bundle with the printer, full Metal X system. So what, what area of L3 are you in? So I'm in the communications. So over here, we've got some end of arm tooling that's printing on the Metal X in, uh, in the 17.4 pH stainless steel. What's your interest in having Actually, it's uh, this is printing an H13 tool steel right now. My bad. Uh, and then we've got our wash station here. So the way the process works, if you're not familiar with it, it's a metal powder bound in a, a waxy polymer matrix. Uh, a part gets extruded and built up layer by layer, similar to other FDM processes. That green part gets put into the debinding wash station, which begins that debinding process. Then that brown part is thrown into our sintering furnace, which sinters together those metal powders into your final metal part. And so what you get out of the process is a part that is pure metal. And this is an example of the 17.4 pH stainless steel part. This is the motor mount that uh, can 
be seen right here. And these parts can be, this part was polished as you can see, these parts can be uh, finished just like any other metal part. They can be heat treated, um, polished them, weld them, post machine them, just like another metal part. And we've got a lot of different application use cases, demo parts around, Stanley Black & Decker, this one's a new one, well, an older case study, but we got the actual part on the piece of equipment at this trade show. So this part right here, this actuator housing, used to be a four-part assembly, so you had this, uh, this water jet part here, this cast and machined housing here, and then two bolts. And Stanley Black & Decker was able to reduce this down to just a one part 3D pin, uh, one 3D printed part. And you can see this is the Mark Forged part right here. So if we keep walking this way, some other cool parts that we've got at the show this time is hybrid parts. So whenever you want to have really lightweight parts, but still have high strength and high wear resistance on high wear resistance on the parts that are actually going to be interfacing uh, as the tool, uh, you can mix parts that are both metal 3D printed and printed in composites to really optimize that weight and the strength. You can walk along this way. If you stopped by the booth at Pastures, you've probably seen this is a device that was 3D printed by one of our customers. There's about two dozen 3D printed carbon fiber reinforced parts here. Here's another new demo that's really exciting. This was uh, featured on a BattleBot recently. This is a generatively designed metal part. So basically you put in the parameters of the types of loads that are going to be put on the part, where the loads are going to be placed, and then what uh, critical dimensions there are on the part. And then generative design actually gives you a bunch of different ideas for the design of the part, optimized for the strength and weight that you're looking for. And then using a metal 3D printing process, it's very easy to just load that STL onto your printer, uh, which we did with the Metal X to get this uh, really cool shaped metal bracket that's optimized for strength and weight. Again, if you've seen a booth before or seen some of our demos, you've probably seen one like this before. This is our impeller demo. We've got a lot of the different metals that we're working with. Right now, our customers are printing in 17.4 pH stainless steel, H13 tool steel, and A2 tool steel. Coming soon, titanium 316L and L625. Very nice sample parts as usual. Nylon, continuous carbon fiber reinforced onyx right here. Top by the booth, you can have your very own. We've got another Metal X set up over here. Two Metal Xs at the show today. Some more cool application examples. So here's another example of a hybrid part. We printed this, uh, it's, a, it's an end of arm tooling for a robot. You can keep it super lightweight by printing the majority of it in onyx, but then just the part that's going to be interfacing with the actual parts, uh, you can print out of a, out of a steel to make it very wear resistant. So it can last a long time, but you're not really weighing down the end effector of the robot. Another end effect here, some examples of soft jaws. Speaking of soft jaws, we also bought one of our industrial printers with us this week. So this is our Mark Forge X7. So this prints in uh, our thermoplastic materials, onyx and nylon. But the cool part about it, if uh, you've heard about us before, is that it can reinforce parts with continuous fibers. So that includes continuous carbon fiber, Kevlar, and fiberglass. And what that does is it allows you to 3D print parts that have strength very close to that of 6061 aluminum. So instead of sending something to the machine shop, you can print it overnight. And so tooling, fixtures, and even end-use parts can be printed on this 3D printer. So you're looking at right now, it's printing an end effector. So one huge advantage of this is an end effector used to move around pipe couplings on a factory floor. It's reinforced with Kevlar, so really lightweight and can withstand those repeated interfaces with production parts. Oh yeah, like two layers. Yeah, yeah. So that's so looks good. Just our industrial series, the Mark IV X7. And so I think that covers it for today. That's that's the tour of the booth. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are at Rapid, come stop by. We'll be here all week.